Hey guys, uh, welcome back. And today I'm going to be covering Kafka. And we're going to be setting up a MySQL database, streaming data into Kafka, and then consuming it on the SQL Server side. We're going to be replicating MySQL to SQL Server. So let's get started. Install Confluence community version of Kafka. And we're also going to install their JDBC connector as well as the, their Debezium version of it. Now, the reason we're going to go this route is one that it already has schema registry installed and it's a little more streamlined in this process, but you can set all this up still through uh, just regular Kafka. Um, you'll need to add a schema registry if you just install Kafka. You can probably get that from GitHub. You can either use a uh, Confluence version and there should be one other version of schema registry out there I think that people use. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's get the Confluence community version installed. And another thing is, is I am using local versions of both MySQL and SQL Server. I actually have a Docker container running MySQL and we're going to unpackage this. Cool. Okay. So now we're going to then add con. So I also post all the, these URLs as well for a reference. Now, of course, if you're watching this a year from now, uh, you know, there's going to be newer versions out. Right. And so some of these URLs might be, might not, might not work, but if you just go to confluence website, you should be able to traverse and, and find this information. We'll need to install confluent hub or at least get it downloaded. Then we're going to extract that info. So we'll have a bin, an ETC and a share. So we're actually just going to move all this info, uh, into the confluent folder. Hub. Uh, Add them in, and then okay. And then confluent client Java move it there. Okay, so now that we have the hub installed, we're gonna now install both the confluent Bezium and JDBC. Well, hub, let's see what we need to install. So we want this info here, install this. Yes. Yes. Okay. So now that is a JDBC connector. Let's get the MySQL to Ezium. So it's another Just install from the hub. Okay, so now both Debezium and JDBC connector are installed. We are going to add, now we're just going to start everything up. We're going to start up Zookeeper, Kafka Connect, and our schema registry. Let's start up Zookeeper, start up Kafka. 
if you start up sometimes this will error out if yep so it started up before zookeeper could uh finish booting up so sometimes you gotta wait a second now they are getting they are going to retire zookeeper in future iterations of kafka and uh i can't remember what what part of kafka they're adding but they're adding a new little piece of kafka that they're developing themselves uh for so that's all internal that should be fine should boot up just fine now okay so now kafka is running we're going to boot up connect now in connect you can see in here you can see the plugins right here io debesium so it found that debesium that we installed so it's adding that into the the connect side and then also in that if we go back up you'll see the jdbc connector as well is added into that list of plugins and then last but not least schema registry this will be mostly for the the schema of mysql going into sql server so it's it's registering that schema and tracking it okay so everything is up and running now let's dive into each of the configs both for mysql and sql server so this is the mysql connection I've named, labeled the connection as MySQL CDD, CDC source. I'm using the Debezium connection that we installed previously. So this is what is looking at the bin logs and connecting into Kafka. We're gonna do some rewrite handling. We're gonna do a transform in this connection. You don't have to do this, but I wanna add a suffix to specifically my topic. And all I'm doing for my topic is I'm adding the word, the source, as well as down topics prefix with a POC. So you'll see POC dot, and, I'll, and you'll see that in the SQL side, POC, the table name, dash source. Within the transformation, now this is kind of, up here you see transforms. This is just kind of a grouping. It's not actually the transform itself. The actual transform itself is done here. If you go to Kafka and look up transforms, Kafka's website, I'll post it in the description below. You can actually see the list of transforms that you can do. And all this one's doing is one, transforming the message. And on top of that, it's adding the suffix on the topic. So some database information for the MySQL, you need to have your username, your server ID, a server name. This here for schema history is most likely your local server is gonna be hosting it. It could be hosted on another server, but you need to put your server name in here. And then the port ID, which is most likely 9092. The database port or MySQL, the host, which is your server name and password. And then the name of your connector this is so this, this part is a little interesting we have a table whitelist and a table includes table whitelist is what's going to monitor the schema changes table include is going to be monitoring what tables to actually process so if you only want to process or replicate one table of your database then just put one table if you want to replicate five of the ten put five tables and it's common delimited in here and it will only replicate those five tables to SQL Server. Now, if you want all the tables, then just leave this out and it'll process all your tables in your database and through Kafka. Okay, so let's run. After it runs, the big thing here that you see is created. And we can verify that information on the connect side. And we can see that it has created some information for us. We can see that it did, it created successfully. It's creating some files. And so we know that we're good there. So let's go back and let's review our SQL server. This is what the SQL server connection is going to look like. It's using the JDBC connector. We are doing several transforms here. We're doing in this list, we're going to do an unwrap and insert timestamp and we also want to add some topic information as well. Some connection information for your database. You need your username, password, and then under the URL portion is going to be your server name and the database you plan on writing to. Some other interesting things here. We go back to the transform so we can highlight this and look at this. The very top transform is in deals with unwraps and delete handling. So what we're going to, what part of this we're doing is doing some rewrites. Um, and we can also see part of that being in the insert mode down here, an upsert. So all what that what we're doing here is we're inserting data and we're also updating data. We're not just constantly inserting data. So we actually have no uh, CDC. This is like replication. 
we have two master records that we're referencing from MySQL to SQL Server. Now, if we wanted CDC, we could just do insert. And at that point, you could actually have a change data capture of data from MySQL and SQL Server where you're saying, hey, what happened to this record? You know, when was it previously? What was it updated to? Date. Now, the transforms. Let's look at, look at the unwrap. We're dealing with Tombstone to help with, with deletes. We're also doing, so the actual transform here is this extract new record state. So we're unwrapping this message. And then we also want to unwrap table source as well as the operation. And you'll see those columns in SQL Server. I want to show you the table. Timestamp. Timestamp, what we're doing here is we're doing one, a static field add. So we're saying I want to add a static field called source. Also, I want to add something called update time. So I added a timestamp field called update time. And update time is going to get timestamp in this format. And then also for source, it's going to get a static value of inbound. What's the last one? Topics. Okay, well, we're going to add a column called topic source. And then I'm going to statically grab, well, it's actually not static. Sorry. It's actually looking at this field pretty much and inserting it. So I know what topic I'm utilizing for this table. Uh, and so you can see this is the transformation insert field value. So kind of static, but it's looking at the topics. Auto create. This is a really cool, cool feature. This allows you to create the table on the fly and add new columns on the fly. It will not delete columns. It'll just keep those columns there. If you have developers adding and dropping columns, this is a great feature. Not have to edit your Kafka connection all the time or config. And these last two things are big. So for the previous portion, I said upsert, you have to have a primary key. So your primary key fields and it is case sensitive and you can add if you have multiple primary key fields it's just comma delimited so just add another comma in that column primary key mode if you are dealing with deletes and you want to delete the record just change this to a record key instead of record value and then you also have to add delete equal or deletes dot enabled equals true or something as well but let's go ahead and run this as well as for this one you should see something very similar uh, to the MySQL. So let's go look at connect. And we can also see that SQL Server got created. Perfect, okay, well, now that it's created, let's go look at our database. So now that we can see Salesman has been added, that's the table we decided to monitor. If we look at it, we can see that all the data has been transmitted from MySQL into here. Okay, we can see that there's been some creates and an update. Let's go take a look at MySQL. Cool, one through five, they match. Let's do, so now that we know it matches, but you know, one of the interesting things is what does the message look like being transmitted into? Okay, so now we're gonna monitor and we're gonna wanna want look at some of these messages. So let's, let's delete. Okay. Oh, we don't have our ID three anymore. We still have ID three here, but it's been marked as deleted. So if you had like an ETL process, you could say, oh, I need to delete this from the data warehouse, or you wanted to make sure that you never actually delete any data. You know, you're able to hold on to it, which is really cool. Let's say, let's insert a record, right? Okay. Okay, that got created. Cool. Let's run an update. And now, does, now the name is cool. Okay. But what happens if someone were to go back and say, well, we didn't really want to delete that ID three in MySQL. So, you know, we're going to, we're going to recreate that. We want to make sure we're not missing data. Well, what do you think SQL Server is going to do? Well, you know, and in, in here, it created just fine. Went right back where it should have gone. Okay. Oh. Well, that's cool. ID three just trained into an operation to create because now it is a created record. It's no longer gone. And it's been now changed. It's been updated to not no longer delete it. So that's amazing. Let's look at some of the messages. Whoa, this is some crazy messages. Well, it's broken out by both the schema and the payload. So this is where, like I said before, if you were to add a column, drop a column, that's all within here. If you add a column, it will automatically add that column to SQL Server as well, which is really cool. But let's look at the payload. Right down here is our payload of data. So we can see a before, which that's because there was no before because it was created, and an after. ID, your first name, Emily, last name, Crosby, email, is an email and some source information. 
So that's where you're seeing some of the other data being populated in there, as well as the very end, which is the cool part, which I really, really like is the operation, being able to track that as well as the transmission for when the data came in. There you guys go. I mean, we literally just replicated data from MySQL to SQL Server using Kafka, and this is a game changer. I mean, if you are wanting to stick with a Microsoft product or, you know, you're wanting to kind of transmit and move data to another database system, this is a really cool tool. Now, this is not something you would use if you're like, oh, I want to migrate specifically all my data and be an exact structure. No, because SQL Server and MySQL the table structure is different. So for example, let's look at this table for salesman. A glance at the design of it, right? So they did a whole bunch of varchar maxes. It just did a straight up int. So it's not even a primary key. Whereas on the MySQL side, ID is a primary key as well as email is unique. So this is, this is really just replication of the data, not a replication to architectural design standpoint. But like I said, if you want to replicate data to one database to another, whether that's MySQL to Postgres, Postgres to MySQL, this is all doable through this setup. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. And thank you for watching. You guys stay fresh out there.